my YouTube channel. Once again, is the superstar optomodel, Dr. Adaku Obia, your professional optometrist at Supreme Vision Eye Clinic Abuja. And today, instead of the series of sleep down by microscopy workshop, I'll be taking you on the types of illumination techniques used in sleep down by microscopy. Before I go ahead, I really want to say a very big thank you to each and every one of you that have subscribed to my YouTube channel. Please. It is a motivation to me to carry on and make more videos for you to watch and then learn, educate and teach one another. If you are yet to subscribe to my YouTube channel, please, I beg you, I beg you to please like, comment, share, subscribe and remember to always click on the notification button. Together we can do it. So taking you today on the types of illumination techniques. Generally, there are eight types of illumination techniques used in slate lamp by microscopy. Number one is called the diffuse illumination technique. Number two is the direct illumination technique. Now, this direct illumination technique is subdivided into three. A is called the optic section or the narrow beam. B is called the parallel pipe or the broad beam. C is called the conical beam or the round or circular beam. Number three in the illumination techniques used in slit lamp by microscopy is called the indirect illumination technique. Number four is the retro illumination technique. Now, the retro illumination technique is subdivided into two. We have the retro direct illumination technique and the retro indirect illumination technique. Number five, is called the tangential illumination technique. Number six is called the sclerotic scatter illumination technique. Sclerotic scatter. Number seven is called the specular reflection. And number eight, which is the last but not the least, is called the oscillatory illumination technique. Now, amongst these eight techniques I mentioned, I will further divide them into direct and indirect. What it simply means is that the ones I'll be mentioning now under the direct illumination technique requires that you lock the sclerotic scatter knob or the defocusing knob when you are performing any procedure on the slit lamp by microscope. While the ones under the indirect illumination technique requires that you have to unlock the sclerotic scatter knob or the defocusing knob on your slit lamp by microscope when you are performing them. So let's go. For the direct illumination technique, I will classify diffuse illumination technique as number one. Number two is the direct illumination technique. Number three is the retro direct illumination technique. Number four is the tangential illumination technique. Number five is the specular reflection technique. Now, these five techniques require that you have to lock the sclerotic scatter knob on the slit lamp by microscope whenever you are performing them using the slit lamp. Now, the ones under the indirect illumination technique. Number one, we have the indirect illumination technique itself. Number two, we have the retro indirect illumination technique. And the last but not the least, we have this clarity scatter illumination technique. So it simply means when I'm performing these techniques I mentioned, I have to make sure that the sclerotic scatter knob or the defocusing knob is unlocked on my slit lamp by microscopy. Remember, direct techniques, those illumination techniques, remember to lock. And indirect illumination techniques, remember to unlock when you are performing them. So before I start with the first illumination technique, I want to bring to your notice that each of the technique there is a methodology for each of the techniques I'm going to be talking about. So each technique I mentioned, I'm going to tell you the uses and then I will tell you the parameters. So I'm going to break it down in pieces so that we can be able to understand it. So the first illumination technique in slit lamp by microscopy is the diffuse illumination technique. Now, what is the function of diffuse illumination technique? This is a technique that is done in order to have a gross examination, in order to have a general overview of the external structures of the eye and its agnesia. What am I talking about the external structures of the eye? I'm talking about an overview of the eyelids, an overview of the eyelid margins, an overview of the eyelashes, of the conjunctiva, 
of the sclera, of the iris, and etc. So this is just what, what comes into the eye. So it allows you to have a general look of all these structures and then from there, if you detect there is any problem on a particular structure, that can now take you to other special techniques used in slit lamp by microscopy, like we have the direct illumination techniques and all that. But just have it that the diffuse technique, what it does is just to give you a view, a gross view of the external structures of the eye. Now, what are the parameters you need to put in place in your slit lamp by microscope? Number one is the slit height. This is the slit height. You can see, this is the slit height adjustment knob. So, it simply means that if I want to do my slit lamp by microscopy procedure, I have to put the slit height to be at the highest. For this slit lamp by microscope I have with me, this is the hack suite, the highest on my own is 12. So, your, on your machine, you can have variation of what the highest is. So this is, the, I would say you should set it at 12. No, it all depends on the calibration of your slit lamp. So it means if your slit height adjustable, adjustable calibrated scale, your highest in the machine is 15, yours is 20. Please just set it at the highest. Now, the next thing is now the slit width. The slit width should be set at highest. This is the slit width. You can see this is the slit width adjustment knob. And here there is a mark that indicates whatever you put in. So here 12 is the highest. I'm going to put the slit width at 12. So the slit width is set at 12. For your machine, I don't know what your slit lamp calibrated height scale might be. So just set it at the highest. The next thing is now the angle. The angle is from 30 degrees to 45 degrees. So it means when I want to start performing a diffuse illumination technique, the angle calibrated scale this is the angle calibrated scale. I should make sure I set it at 30 degrees. If you watch here, the angle is at 30. So I'm going to start with a low angle of 30. As I proceed, I can now move on to 40, 45 degrees in the angle. Now, the next thing is the magnification. This is the magnification changer. Look at this is the magnification changer. So you must make sure you start with a low magnification to a high magnification. On this instrument, the lowest magnification here is 10. This is 10 times. So it means that 10 needs to be on this black dot. This indicates that I'm starting with a low magnification. You see, in some slip lamp by microscope, the magnification can start as low as six times. So it means you have to set the knob to six times, which is a low magnification. The next thing we're going to be looking at is now the illumination. The illumination is going to be from low, from low to high. So, the next thing we'll be looking at is the illumination. The illumination is from low to high. So, it simply means that the real start, this is the real start, this is the real start here. So, the real start, which controls the intensity of the light, you're going to start with a low illumination as you proceed. When you have sectioned what you're looking for, you can now increase to moderate. And where there is need for you to put to the highest, you can now turn on the real start, turn it, but remember to start with a low illumination. Another thing you need to note is that the diffuser needs to be in place. This is a diffuser, which is a ground plate. Look at the diffuser. This is a diffuser. And how do you slot in the diffuser? You just have to gently push your diffuser to cross the light. You see? Immediately you put in the diffuser. What it does is to spread, evenly spread the light over the surface of the external structures of the eye. The next thing you need to note is that the slit as this rotator. This is the slit as this rotator. You see what I'm turning? You must make sure that the slit as this rotator is at 90 degrees. Under here, there is a knob that is pointing directly at 90. So you make sure the slit as this rotator is at 90 degrees. Remember, it's a direct technique, and so the sclerotis scatter knob must be locked. This is the sclerotis scatter knob. It must be locked. And your decentration lash, this is the decentration lash. Make sure your decentration lash is at zero. So, this is all about the setup of diffuse illumination technique. So, right now, I'll be going into the practical to show you how you can be able to now examine the different structures I mentioned. So, let's go to the practical section of it.
Now for the diffuse simulation technique with all parameters in place. When you want to now examine the external structures, you have to follow a step-by-step -step approach. The first thing is you have to examine the eyelid. Now for the eyelid, we are starting with the inferior eyelid. So this is the inferior eyelid. You are now checking the inferior eyelid to know if there is any abnormality on the eyelid. Bearing in mind that everything you're going to be checking on this external part is just to look for a problem and not what is normal. Now, you see the way I'm moving? I'm moving from the nasal side to the temporal side of her inferior eyelid. This is the way you hold onto your slip lamp. Making sure you must make sure you hold onto this joystick because it controls, it just like your steering wheel it controls the movement is what you hold on to and you make sure you maintain a focal point like as i'm moving this from left to right you can see at some point if i move this backward like this you can see everything is blurry so we don't want you to get that always make sure you move forward or a little bit backward to make sure things are clear from the beginning till the end now the next thing is you go to the superior eyelid please you look down to the floor your patient need to look down to the floor for you to go to the superior Eyelid now, I'm on the superior eyelid. I still move from the nasal part of the superior eyelid, maintaining a focal point. That is a point of clarity. You see, I'm checking the superior eyelid. Please always be in charge of your light because the light we started from a low and then a moderate light. Please, when you're on the eyelid, do not go put on the light to the highest. You see what is happening. I just turned the real start to the highest. Now, I can't see anything. That is the reason why I need to reduce the light in order for me to see the eyelid very well. After the eyelid, the next thing will not go to the eyelashes. Now, the inferior eyelashes we start with. Your patient needs to look straight. Good. Now, let's go to the eyelashes. This is the inferior eyelashes we are viewing now. Now, on this inferior eyelashes, we are looking at for abnormalities on the eyelashes as well we are looking at the eyelid margin that is the inferior eyelid margin good now the lashes you are checking out to know if there is any trichiasis any misarranged eyelashes and as well on the eyelid is there any blockage of any gland on the eyelid margin okay now we are taking it we are on the eyelid margin and we are at the same time checking out for the inferior eyelashes so we now go to the superior now this is the superior eyelid margin so we are there you keep moving this is from nasal we're going to the temporal please make sure you examine thoroughly check very well the eyelashes the eyelid margins to know if there is any abnormality this is the eyelashes you can see the eyelashes this is the eyelashes you keep moving please do not remain one place keep on moving from temporal to the nasal part of the eye you are checking out for abnormalities on the eyelashes and the eyelid margins now okay, let's check the conjunctiva now on the conjunctiva we're going to be checking the bulbar conjunctiva and what gives you a guide to know your there is you can see the vessels the red vessels are there now you can see the bulbar conjunctiva to the nasal part is not really exposed so if a patient is having a problem how can i really know or how can i examine the eye you need to direct the patient's gaze. Now, to check the nasal part of the bulbar conjunctiva, patient need to look up to their right hand side. Please look up to the look up to the right. Go and you decrease the intensity of your light in order for you to view and check the bulbar conjunctiva. Now, I'm on the bulbar conjunctiva. I need to reduce my light. If I increase the intensity of my light, this is the highest. You see, it takes off everything out of the view you can't even see anything so make sure you control your light i'm reducing the light this intensity is okay this is just a low to moderate intensity of the light now i'm checking out for problems on the bulbar conjunctiva so now i want to check the bulbar conjunctiva towards the temporal part of our eye now the patient needs to look up to their left hand side and you take the slip lamp to this temporal part of the bulbar conjunctiva you see this is the temporal part of the bulbar conjunctiva this is how you keep on holding your joystick as a steering wheel to guide you now i want to check the papilla conjunctiva which is the inferior the patient needs to look up to the ceiling please look up to the ceiling now remember with your hands washed 
or you're wearing a glow, you need to gently retract the inferior eyelid margin and then you take down your light inferiorly to check the inferior palpebra conjunctiva. You just gently need to retract, just gently need to retract the eyelid. Now I'm taking my joystick, you see, I'm checking out to know if there is any problem on the inferior palpebra conjunctiva. This is how you move. Please make sure you maintain a focal point, which is a point of clarity. Now, if you want to check the superior palpebra conjunctiva, your patient needs to look down to the floor and gently you still need to retract the patient's eyelid and you take your joystick to the superior part of the eye. You see, you move to the superior part to check if there is any problem on the boba conjunctiva. This is how we do it. This is how you do it. Next, let's go to the cornea. So, all you need to do in this case is that let's look at the cornea now. I want to examine the cornea. Now, to examine the cornea, you see, I need to increase my light. But the cornea is transparent in nature. So, it's the pigmentation of the iris that makes it look like if the cornea is brownish. No. So, at this point, we're looking at the cornea, we're looking at the iris, and then you're just checking out for abnormalities. So, if there is any abnormality detected on these structures, that now leads you to now go into the specific illumination technique that can be used to examine them. So, that is all for diffuse illumination technique. It just guides you to have a gross examination of the external structures of the eye, which I just showed you. So, next, I'll be taking you on the direct illumination technique. That's the next series that is coming up soonest on our video. So thank you once again for watching this video today on the sleep lamp by microscopy diffuse illumination technique. Do not forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and hit the notification button for more educative video on sleep lamp by microscopy. See you next on direct illumination technique. Thank you very much. Bye.